Joining us in the studio this morning is, is Daniel Rice. He's author of a new book. It's out. It's called This Side of Wilderness. And thank you so much for coming in this morning and joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, Maggie. Well, um, tell us about yourself a little bit before we get started on the book. Um, where, uh, how did you end up in Bemidji? Well, I was living out in Wyoming working for the United States Geological Survey there. And I ended up purchasing a piece of property over in Itasca County, Minnesota. The reason I purchased the property was to spend four months living alone out of a tent. So I saved up money, resigned from my job there in Wyoming, moved here to Minnesota, spent the summer of 2011 living out of a canvas tent on about 20 acres of remote property along the Big Fork River. And then after that, found my way into Bemidji. How'd you pick Itasca County? It was the land, the property that um, I toured. It's a big big country now. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) How'd you end up? Okay. Well, we toured probably a dozen plus properties for sale around northern Minnesota prior to finding that one and selecting it. Uh, Are you from here? Um, I would say I'm mostly from Minnesota. I moved to Minnesota around the age of seven and moved away in early 20s and then returned again about Ah. three years ago. What was it like living in a tent for that long? Oh, it was great. It was challenging, but also rewarding. I mean, there were there were times when you just feel like you're the the absolute only person who has ever lived, which can be a good thing <laughs> in some instances. And in other instances, you just start to feel alone, and you just start to question everything. So there's there's a little bit of escapism by leaving society to live by yourself in a tent, but there's also confrontism because you're forced to face issues from your past, forced to focus on what it is you want with your life. That was like a big vision quest almost is what you were doing. What what months, what months are we talking about? Let's see, started in June and packed up camp and left right around the end of September. Uh, did you have uh, did you have things to uh, deal with like uh, storms or? There were a few nights when I thought my tent might lift off and land in Oz. <laughs> you know the green sky, the swaying aspens, electricity all around. Yeah. It was... So this sounds like fodder for your book. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely definitely influenced me. It um, the book itself would fall into the category of semi autobiographical fiction. Um, and by that I mean I took experiences from my life. Nothing in the book is written as truth. There's nothing nothing that happened word for word in the book that I took from my real life. And none of the people in the book are real life characters, but they're all influenced from that time in my life. Right. So you, so you ended up writing basically a book of fiction, but, but using your real life experiences to... Uh, to populate that book yeah, a little it's bit interpretive not you know, not descriptive but more interpretive yeah How, when did you start writing in general yeah <laughs> um boy when i was a kid i mean my mom still has poems and short stories from elementary school that i wrote you know stashed away in a box somewhere um it was probably about 10 years ago that i decided that i wanted to try and move into the realm of novel writing uh, i started probably started and stopped probably close to a dozen different books sometimes i would get 20 pages in sometimes i would get 90 to 100 pages in and just the real life the nine to five daily grind just distracted me you know i'd get really going good on a weekend and then monday morning would come and i'm focused on work and responsibility so i knew that for me anyways if i ever wanted to finish one fully with all that i could offer it i had to separate myself from those distractions right so tell us, tell me about the, the nuts and bolts of this of this story here, this book. You were explaining to me earlier that a part of it is uh, third person narrative, part of it is first person narrative. What, what, what's the story you're trying to tell uh, with this with the book uh, called? Let's see, this side of a wilderness is the name of the title. Correct. Yeah. Well, to summarize, it is a book about a young man from Wyoming. His name is Eli Sylvan. He begins to feel alienated from his friends and his coworkers. And he decides that he wants to move into the wilderness. He spends his weekends camping and fishing in Wyoming. But this is never good enough, these brief interludes with nature. He realizes that he wants something more, something to fulfill his life. And so he meets a young woman by the name of Lamara. And together they develop a plan 
where they're going to move into a Minnesota wilderness, resign from their positions, and just live off the land. And then, uh, and and they do. And they, without giving too much away, there's any car chases. There's no car chases. No um, mafia. No vampires either. Sorry. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Wilderness is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it, tell us about your publishing decision. How did uh, how did you uh, work around that and make your decisions of how to get it printed and published? I decided to start a small publishing imprint called Riverfeet Press. Um, I liked the idea of having control over creativity. I knew this wasn't going to be a book that a literary agent in New York City was going to read and want to try and turn into the next bestseller. This is a book targeted more towards people that enjoy living in areas like northern Minnesota, remote regions of the country. And so I started my own publishing imprint called Riverfeet Press, which <laughs> has really been a learning experience, just diving headfirst into this whole world of publishing. But it's been a fun ride so far. Yeah. What, uh, what kind of decisions do you have to make when you're publishing a book? The Well... There's yeah. probably yeah. a lot of ways to do it. Yeah, you have to... I mean, you can be a self-publisher or you, or you can be an independent publisher, and the difference is the independent publisher pursues as close to full-fledged traditional publishing as they can find, meaning you're hiring an editor to make sure your book is in its finest form. You're using professional interior design formats. You're using unique cover design there, there are, there are, um, like Create Space. That's one of the, yep. the one of the printers. There's places that I've learned about. Is it, is it a print on demand? Yes, it's print on demand. Yep. Yeah. So there's. And how did you find editors and designers and uh, people Word like of that? Mouth. There's actually a woman, a freelance editor locally in Bemidji, who did the editing for this book. So got lucky there. Yeah, great. that is lucky. Yeah. yeah she, she does good work, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, where? Uh, how are you? How are you get? How are you distributing the book? Well, I'm starting small. I mean, currently it is available on Amazon.com. Um, I'm not releasing it publicly until December sixth. Going to start with a book release party at the Bemidji Brewing Company Tap Room. That's this Friday. That's this Friday from four to seven. Correct. Yep. And after that, I hope to have shelf space in several shops around Bemidji, and then just try and expand from there. Get get it across northern Minnesota and just see what happens. What do you think of the uh, literary scene in northern Minnesota? Are you connected with uh, other writers in the area? Have you met a lot of folks that do writing in this area? I've been pretty reclusive for the last two years. I did briefly meet another gentleman, uh, Wendell Berry, who published a really great book about his time in Vietnam. Um, other than that, that was just a real brief experience with him. Um, that's a problem with being a wilderness recluse, you know, uh, <laughs> not, uh, uh, Daniel. You gotta, yeah, you gotta crawl out of the tent and <laughs> not pounding on my door. Get to know, yeah, uh, <laughs> we can help you out there. And now, uh, and now you're you're really thinking you're going to make your home in in the Bemidji area. Um, yeah, absolutely. In, yeah. in a long term, yep, it sounds yeah. like you have some business plans and different things for this community. Yeah, we like it here a lot. Um, just had a baby daughter who's. Growing up here, we've, my wife works in town, and I myself am working on starting a little business here in town, downtown, so definitely digging roots. Yeah, do you think uh, the proximity of, of relative wilderness in this part of the world uh, makes it a different kind of a place, or that it really has an impact on, on the community and the people? I do. I think, it, I think it really helps people stay focused. I mean... Even a small community like Bemidji can sometimes get busy with the daily grind. You know, I mean, just this morning driving in, there was traffic at quarter to eight, especially with <laughs> right. these roads and, and just the things that can wear on you that you can really find release just driving 10 minutes out of town, finding a quiet lake shore or a piece of secluded forest, tree stand, whatever is your pleasure there. Yeah. Do you still have your property in Itasca County? I do, yeah. And so some that's really, that's open to you in the summertime with a tent mm -hmm. in the future, huh? Yep, keep the tent set up there permanently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that? Did you have like a platform under it or was it just on the ground or how did you? Yeah, what I, was built, that I built a small, like? built a small uh, plywood platform just to lay underneath it to keep it flat and drier inside the tent. Yeah. Yeah. What did you eat? Um, cliff bars and brats. <laughs> survival food. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I think that's pretty typical. Yeah. Those right. broads pretty tricky to sneak up on. And... <laughs> they were difficult hunting sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking to Daniel Rice. He's author of a brand new book. It's called This Side of a Wilderness. And uh, you have an event this Friday at the Bemidji Brewery where you're going to be uh, releasing the book. And uh, what's that, what's that going to be like? Well, I think it's going to be fun. I mean, one of my favorite things, whether it's sitting in a comfortable camp chair beside a quiet lake shore or in a reclining chair in my own living room, I just enjoy having a, a book and a good beer both open in reach. And I'm hoping, to, <laughs> I'm hoping to be able to share that experience with people. All right. Well, Daniel, thanks for, thanks for coming in. Anything else you want to say about the book or any more to tease us? I, we don't want to get too far in because, um, because we don't want to ruin the surprise. But Yeah, no, I think... I think we're good, Maggie. You already said beer's coming. That's all you need to say. Buy a book and beer. Buy a book, you get a free beer Friday evening. (laughs) All right. We'll see you Friday night. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for coming in.